Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? This is my video update on this Friday afternoon, June the 28th. Let's talk about some news. And of course, we have to talk about the Trump Biden debate. The Trump Biden debate. Everyone's talking about the Trump Biden debate. So did Biden, did Biden blow up? Did he implode during this debate? No, he did not implode. But was it, was it a disaster for Biden and for the Democrats? Yes, absolutely yes. I would actually argue that it would have been better if Biden had imploded during, during this debate. At the beginning of the debate, it looked like Biden would, would crumble. It looked like he was about to, to fall apart. And then Jake Tapper came in and, and saved him, the moderator from uh, CNN. He saved Biden but it looked like Biden was, was ready right at the beginning of the debate to, to lose it. He was mumbling and, and about to freeze and it looked like it was all over. And then Jake Tapper stepped in and, and uh, he saved Biden. But uh, the, the rest of the debate was, was Biden looking, looking confused, stumbling often, saying some, some weird things and, uh, and looking very, very slow, very slow and, and confused. And his, his facial reactions, his body language looked, looked really bad. And, and it was a catastrophe. It was a catastrophe. It would have been better if if the Band-Aid had just been ripped off. If he imploded, Band-Aid rips off, and, and the Democrats can then say, okay, uh, Dr. Jill Biden, Biden family, Biden handlers, it's over. Take a look. And they would have admitted, yes, you're right. It's over. We can't go on any longer. Let's find someone else before the uh, convention in Chicago. But now you're going to have Dr. Jill Biden and, and Biden's handlers. They're going to still hold out some, uh, some hope that, that Biden can, can make it to November, that he can serve a second term. And now it's going to take some convincing from the, the big families in, in the Democrat Party, the, the Clinton clan, the Obama clan, Schumer, Pelosi, they're going to have to have to convince uh, Dr. Jill, his wife. I, be I believe that's the person that they have to go to. They're going to have to convince her that that it's over. We need someone else. So the the poll from CNN at the the end of the debate had 67 percent who saw that uh, who believed that Trump had won the debate and 33 percent believed Biden had won the debate. And this is a CNN poll. Van Jones from CNN, he said that it's, it's over for Biden. It's time for Biden to, to step aside. That's pretty much what Van Jones of CNN said, who also said that he loves Biden. He thinks Biden is a great, a great man and a great president. He said he, he served for Biden, he worked for Biden. But Van Jones said it's over. That is what Van Jones said. Uh, John King of CNN pretty much said the same thing. He said it's over for Biden. The Democrats need to look elsewhere. And most of the mainstream media, which is super duper pro-friendly Biden, they said the same thing. 
they pretty much said the exact same thing, running with stories following the, the debate, immediately following the debate, with, uh, with stories and commentary saying that, that this was a, a very poor showing for Biden. Biden failed to convince the American people that he's up, for, uh, he's up, up to the job and he can uh, take on a second term. The Associated Press, they ran with the title, A Halting Biden Tries to Confront Trump at Debate, but Sparks Democratic Anxiety About His Candidacy. Forbes said, these, these are the likely Democratic presidential candidates if Biden drops out, as rough debate prompts calls to stand down. Mediaite said, looks and sounds ancient. Biden's appearance roasted minutes into CNN debate with Trump. The New York Post, their cover says, just sad, with a picture of a very confused Biden. President mumbles, stumbles, freezes in train, train wreck debate versus Trump. We've witnessed the end of Biden's presidency. And the Drudge Report said, Operation Replace Biden, Dems scramble with 130 days to go, debate catastrophe. So the message is being sent to the Biden camp. It's over. It's time for Biden to, to make an exit, exit stage left, and uh, it's time to find a suitable replacement. Biden said some pretty, some pretty strange stuff during the debate. He definitely said some strange stuff. He said that there are 1,000 trillionaires in America. That was an interesting statement from Biden. And, and then he was, he was talking about, I think he was talking about um, Medicare and, and stuff like that. And, and you couldn't make sense of anything he was saying. And then it, it went over to Trump to, to follow up on Biden's statement. And Trump just said, I, I don't understand what this guy said. That's what, that's what Trump said. That was devastating. I have to admit that, uh, that exchange, if you can call it an exchange, but that, uh, that reply from Trump was devastating. Let me see if I have a quote. Yeah, Trump said, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. That was devastating from Trump. Yeah. The format, you know, the format helped Biden because the, the moderators could, could cut the mic, the mics off. Uh, there were two commercial breaks, which I think was a first in presidential debates to actually allow two pauses. Uh, there was no audience. There was, there was no, uh, no back and forth that was allowed. One person could say something and then the other, the other person could say something and that was it. So everything was under very tight control. And that, and that did help Biden. That, that did prevent Biden from completely imploding. As I said, Jake Tapper uh, rescued Biden during the beginning of the debate from a complete implosion. But uh, the format also helped Trump, I think. I think it helped Trump because it, it also prevented Trump from, from, from saying something crazy. It kept Trump in a box and it kept him uh, focused. So I think it actually benefited Trump as, as well. But uh, Trump, he said some, some interesting things. He said that Ukraine is losing the war. Yep, Trump said that. He said Ukraine is losing this thing. That was an interesting statement from Trump. Towards the end, end of the debate, they started to talk about golf. I think that was the only time during the debate where the moderators actually let them exchange uh, views, actually get into a real debate. That was the only time that a real debate took place is when they started to talk about golf and, uh, and who's, who's a better golfer. It was basically the, the exchange that took place, but that was towards the, the end of the debate. So now the Democrats are scrambling they are going to start scrambling for a replacement, and the media is telling them 
it's time to find a replacement. That's the message that they're getting from the media. It's time to find a replacement. So now they have to convince Dr. Jill and uh, the, the handlers of Biden to, uh, to step aside. And they're going to probably have to deal with Kamala as well. They're going to have to convince Kamala that it's not her time to become president because she's going to, to expect that she's, going, that she's the one to, to take over uh, should Biden step aside. So Project Biden might be winding down, might be winding down, as Project Ukraine is also winding down and crumbling. Project Ukraine equals Project Biden. Yep. Think about it. Step back and think about it for a second. Project Ukraine mirrors Project Biden. Both projects started with a whole lot of excitement, a whole lot of enthusiasm. The adults were back in the White House. Remember that? Biden is a foreign policy wizard. He's a foreign policy master. We're going to defeat Russia. Ukraine is going to defeat Russia. Putin will be overthrown. The ruble is rubble. Remember all of that? The siege of Kiev and the ghost of Kiev and the great Kherson counteroffensive and the Kharkiv counteroffensive. And Ukraine is going to win. The Russian economy is crumbling. It's in tatters. Tatters, I tell you. Yep. Now both projects are crumbling. The super duper spring summer counteroffensive, that was it for Project Ukraine. That was when the panic set in when the uh, counteroffensive was easily, easily defeated by the Russian military. That's when the panic really set in. Oh, crap. We've lost this thing. What do we do? And yesterday, during the debate, which, uh, which was a catastrophe for Biden, now the panic is setting in. Oh, crap. What do we do? And there's nothing that the mainstream media can do to, to cover up Project Ukraine or to cover up Project Biden anymore. There's nothing that they can do. They'll try. They'll try to spin things. Uh, they'll try to, to drag things on a little further. At least with Project Ukraine, they'll try to drag it on a little more. I think with Project Biden, it's probably run its course. But boy, did the media really really uh, prop up both projects in a big way with a lot of propaganda and a lot of lies. But I don't think that's, that's going to fly anymore. So Project Ukraine equals Project Biden. So let's, uh, let's talk about Project Ukraine. Huh? The EU had a meeting yesterday in Brussels and Alensky was invited and they signed security agreements. That's right. EU and Ukraine signed security deal. Kiev has sealed similar pacts with several NATO countries, formalizing their commitment of support. Speaking during a meeting of the EU member states leaders at the Council of Europe on Thursday, Alensky said, today, European Council President Charles Michel and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and I, we signed it, the joint security commitment with the EU. He added that together with President Nauseda, I signed the security agreement between Ukraine and Lithuania and together with Prime Minister Kalis, the security agreement between Ukraine and, Est and Estonia, and I invite everyone in Europe who is still on the sidelines of the security work to join us. So there's Ukraine's consolation prize for not entering NATO, for, from being blocked from entering NATO. In July, the consolation prize is security deals with, with the entire collective West. What security deal are you putting together with the European Union? 
That's nonsense. How is the European Union going to provide security for Project Ukraine? It can't. How is Lithuania and Estonia going to provide security for Project Ukraine? It can't. All of these security deals, these are the, uh, these are the consolation prizes given to Ukraine and Alensky because uh, NATO is off the table. So they're going to get security deals, which, are, which is really nothing different than, than what Ukraine has been getting over the past two plus years, weapons and money. That's what these security deals say. We're going to give you weapons and money for the next five or 10 or 20 years. But they're signing these security deals with an unelected president. So I imagine these security deals can be reneged at any time. So that was Alensky's statement when he signed the security deals. Eh, today, today we sign security deal with this, this Charles Michel, this guy that looks like character from Monty Python film. And I also signed security deal with angry German woman doctor. Yes, we signed security deal. And, and I also signed security deal with this guy named Lithuania. I don't know who this guy is, but we signed security deal. Eh, Podoliak, is this correct? Uh, Mr. President, uh, Lithuania is not a person. It's a country. What? This, this country? Li Lithuania? Oh, interesting. I did not know this. Uh, Podoliak, question. Does this country, Lithuania, does it have nice real estate? Nice homes? Maybe we buy something there. <laughs> yep. Elensky. Elensky, he's, he's collecting those security deals. <laughs> Those security deals, but NATO, yet, <laughs> yet. They're going to string him along with NATO. They're going to string along all of Ukraine with NATO, right? It's going to be a postponed entry into NATO. What did, uh, what did the White House uh, representative say the other day? I did a live stream with uh, Daniel Davis, Deep Dive. Daniel Davis, check it out. A fantastic live stream, a fantastic channel. And we talked about uh, Ukraine and NATO. And he brought up a video from, from one of uh, the Biden White House advisors on, on NATO and Ukraine. And he said that, that at the NATO summit in July in Washington, NATO is going to give Ukraine a bridge. A bridge into NATO, he said. Not entry into NATO, but they're going to they're gonna build a bridge. <laughs> a shiny bridge with lights and many cars <laughs> and a bicycle lane. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's gonna have a bicycle lane <laughs> and a path to walk over the bridge. <laughs> They're gonna build a bridge, a bridge for NATO, for NATO and Ukraine. Ah, <laughs> oh, the script writers, the stuff that the script writers come up with. That's code for we're going to string you along and you're going to fight Russia until the very last Ukrainian. That's what, that's what this bridge is code for. That's what it's code for. And that's horrific. But that's what NATO is telling Alensky and, uh, and Ukraine. So Orban, he, uh, he hooked up with Alensky at this meeting. And I wonder what Orban told Alensky. A lot of video floating out on the interwebs of Orban uh, approaching Alensky. It was Orban that approached Alensky. And it looked like, going off of some of the, the body language, because we don't know what they said, uh, there hasn't been any statement issued from Alensky's side or, or from uh, Orban's side as to what they discussed. But uh, it looks like Orban, if I had to take a guess, it looked like Orban was telling Alensky, look, bro, you've lost. When are you going to realize this? Let's, uh, let's negotiate. Let's de-escalate. 
come on, man, what are you doing? That's what it looked like Orban was telling Alensky. He's like, what are you doing? And then it looked like Alensky was, was telling Orban, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Orban. I don't know. I just, I just collect money and I buy homes. What can I tell you? <laughs> oh, boy. Alensky said during this conference when he was speaking to the media, he said, Ukraine does not want to prolong the war. We do not want it to last for years. And he also said, we have many wounded and killed on the battlefield. We must put a settlement plan on the table within a few months. He added, without providing any exact figures of casualties, and he said that uh, Ukraine would table this, uh, this deal, this peace deal, at the second peace summit. A second Swiss peace summit. <laughs> we will put together peace deal at second Swiss peace summit. That is what Alensky told the media. At least he's talking about a, a, a deal. I guess, you know, glass half full. At least Alensky is talking about a deal, and at least he's kind of admitting that uh, things have gone horrifically wrong in, uh, in this conflict. He's kind of, kind of admitting it in a roundabout way, in an Alensky about way. Anyway. There's rumors. Well, this is just a rumor, and I really don't know if I believe this. And I haven't been able to find to find a, a second source confirming this. But I'm going to throw this out there. But I warn everybody that this is rumor. This may turn out to be true, and if it is true, then this is huge. But I don't. I don't believe this. I really don't believe this. But here we go. Hungary demands recognition of Transcarpathia as traditional Hungarian region. In a surprising development, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has demanded that Transcarpathia, a region in Ukraine, be recognized as a traditional Hungarian region. This demand comes as part of a list of 11 conditions presented by Hungary in exchange for agreeing not to interfere with the start of negotiations on Hungary's accession to the European Union. Do you guys believe this? I don't know. I'm finding this hard to believe. If this is true, then this is huge. This is huge because it means that, that the, uh, the disintegration of, of Ukraine may, may be underway. The divvying up of Ukraine may have started, but I don't know. I, I just don't buy this. Keep in mind that come July 1st, Hungary uh, takes over the presidency of the European Union. So Hungary's going to have quite a bit of power at, uh, at the EU level. Maybe Orban exerts some of this, this leverage, uses some of this leverage that Hungary, that Hungary will have. But uh, my thinking is that Orban is going to, to push for, for the money that the EU has, has taken from Hungary and is holding from Hungary. I think he's going to push for that money to, to be returned to Hungary. But who knows? Maybe he did present Ukraine and, and Delensky with, with 11 conditions in exchange for agreeing not to interfere in Ukraine's accession to the EU. It's possible. Let's move on. Let's move on. What else is on the agenda for today? Medvedev spoke at the St. Petersburg uh, Legal Forum. And Medvedev, who is a lawyer, and many people say he, he was and is an excellent lawyer, he said that asset, asset theft and arrests could be grounds for war. That is what Medvedev said as he was speaking at the St. Petersburg uh, International Legal Forum. Medvedev said the seizure and forfeiture of state assets could be qualified under certain circumstances as an act of aggression and could even be considered causes belly, Medvedev told the SPILF plenary session using the Latin term for an event that justifies war. No country is safe 
from confiscation of its assets under the order that is based on U.S. domination, Medvedev noted, pointing out that Afghanistan, Venezuela, and Iran all had their funds seized before the West turned its eye on Russia. Unilateral sanctions must end. They are an instrument of political coercion against those opposed to the rules-based world order, contrary to both the spirit and letter of the UN Charter, Medvedev said. Then Medvedev said that countries subjected to sanctions should join together in consultations on collective defense against the countries that impose the restrictions against them. Medvedev also said that Russia will demand not just the lifting of all sanctions as the precondition for any negotiations on ending the Ukraine crisis, but intends to demand compensation for all the damages, he added. It's a pretty strong statement from Medvedev. He is right. He is right on, uh, on saying that sanctions are, are an act of war. That is true. They are a type of, of war against a country. But uh, basically what Medvedev is, is doing here is he's, he's uh, gathering support from the global majority so that they can work together to, to counter the, the sanctions policy of the collective West. That is what he is doing. And, and I think it's going to be successful. I think a lot of people are freaked out at how the U.S. dollar has been weaponized. A lot of people, a lot of countries, a lot of wealthy, wealthy individuals, investors, they're very freaked out at Collective West asset freezing, asset seizure, and the weaponization of the U.S. dollar. Thank you, Professor Biden. That was Professor Biden's doing, his foreign policy wizard team, his, his dream team, foreign policy whiz kids. <laughs> yep, weaponized the U.S. dollar to the maximum. It's been weaponized for many decades, but, but Biden put it in overdrive, the Biden White House, and they freaked out a lot of people. So today there are elections in Iran for a new president since the the death of Raisi. We have now come to, I believe, 50 days since that, that happened, and we are going to get a new president in Iran. And, and what else? What else before Clown World? I think that's it. So Clown World could easily be the, the debate. Biden's stumbling, his freezing, his, his facial expressions, his facial expressions. You know, the, the, the facial expressions and some of the things that Biden said, those are going to be used by, uh, by the Trump campaign and, uh, and by many makers of memes from now until November 2024. And they're going to get millions and millions of views on social media, on Twitter and on Telegram. A catastrophe for Biden, an absolute disaster. A complete implosion, a complete blowing up? No, but it would have been better if he completely blew up. It would have been better if, if Jake Tapper just got out of the way. Then it would have been easier to convince Biden to step aside. They could have ripped the Band-Aid off. But instead, instead we are going to have some, uh, some more discussions at the, uh, amongst, amongst the, the higher-ups in the Democrat Party to debate and discuss and see what do we do now. And you know Dr. Jill, who's who's running the whole Biden thing, she's, gonna, she's going to insist because she loves the power. You can tell she loves the power. She's going to insist that everything is okay. We can do it. We can get them to November. Trust me, I got everything under control. 
did you guys see the video of, of Dr. Jill when the debate was over? She, uh, she escorted Biden down the stairs and uh, it was not good. One stair, one stair, staircase that Biden had to go down and it was not good, not good at all. Anyway, so what is the clown world? Let's see, how about, I, how about if I play a video from, uh, from the European Union of, uh, of the new NATO Secretary General, Mark Rutte, and he was speaking with the media, and toxic, toxic flip-flopper Macron, because Bloomberg and much of the, the collective West media is now saying that Macron is toxic. He is toxic. No one in France wants to be associated with Macron before the elections. No one in the collective West wants to touch Macron because the man is simply toxic. Flip flopper, strategic ambiguity, toxic Macron. Anyway, Macron looked like he was in a really good mood and he interrupts uh, Rutte speaking with the media, the, the Klaus Schwab golden boy, Mark Rutte, Klaus Schwab's favorite son. And, uh, and they start joking around uh, about, uh, about how Putin has, has woken up the European Union and, and everything now is looking, looking really good for, for Europe because they have Rutte in as secretary general and they're signing all of these security agreements. Anyway, that's gonna be my clown world. A very chipper, a very happy Macron uh, interrupting Mark Rutte. They hug it out. And, uh, and boy, do they hug it out. <laughs> they really hug it out. And uh, just, just a bunch of, of, well, you know, it is a clown world segment. A bunch of, <laughs> see for yourself. <laughs> see for yourself and, ha and have no doubts about the, the European leadership. These people are, are not the, the best and brightest that Europe has to offer, that's obvious. And, uh, and also, looking at Macron, I think we can easily uh, conclude that, that Macron is probably very comfortable with, uh, with an exit as the president of France. I think he's very comfortable if he gets pummeled in the elections and he's allowed to exit as president of France and go off and create his own his own think tank or his own WEF clone, the Macron Center of Strategic Ambiguity <laughs> or something like that, a Tony Blair competitor. Anyway, check out the video. That's my clown world. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments down below. TheDuran.Locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop. What do we have going on? I think we have limited edition merch, which should be up on the Duran shop very soon. Check out the limited edition designs. That's it for me. Take care. Mr. Putin or uh, Zelensky think of that discussion if they were Sorry, to hear about it. I interrupt you. I just hey! wanted to say that we are very sad because we lose a great oh. comrade. <laughs> he was a wonderful prime minister and fellow. And uh, but we have a big chance because he will become Secretary General. This is so kind of you. You will, you will be always more than welcome at our Is NATO uh, brain alive now, President? Has yeah. NATO got its brain I mean, back? We had a wake up call thanks to Mr. Putin, if I may say. Uh, mm -hmm. So no need to wake it up. But I, I know that we have a, a strong European and a, a great alliance. Thank you. Pardon de cette interruption, ça ne fait pas. Je vais nous résoudre.